In today's video, we have a divorced couple in family court to discuss a custody modification. According to dad and a CPS worker, the living conditions, among other things, that mom had the two children living in are unacceptable and unsafe. Dad wants mom to take a drug test as well as grant custody over to him. I found this case in a compilation from the channel on Tropolis. This is the defendant's father's motion for custody. The original custody order was from a judgment of divorce, gave her sole legal and physical. Since that time, there have been numerous motions, ex parte requests, things back and forth between the parties. Um, apparently, mother still has custody. Um, Mr. Uh, Lindsay has submitted uh, some documents that indicate that um, the children are living in a completely inappropriate location. Um, CPS has been contacted. CPS worker is in the waiting room, but I've not brought her in because this is not a hearing uh, per se, not an evidentiary hearing, but if necessary, I'll bring her in and ask her questions. Um, the uh, father has sent in pictures uh, of the housing, has uh, made numerous statements about the, the, about Peyton, the oldest child, calling him and asking him to come pick her up because of the things that were going on there. I believe there's also some stuff that the where she was living, the person who owns the property. Uh, I don't know that she can continue to go back there. Um, and he is asking for a change of custody based on that. Um, based on his statements, I'm quite convinced that there is proper cause and change of circumstance to allow for an evidentiary hearing. I cannot change uh, custody here on a uh, Friday morning, but um, we'll continue on uh, in a moment after I have an opportunity. Miss, Mr. Lindsay, is that about sums it up, basically? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Lindsay, what, what's your response? Uh, as to the details that he shared, they were taken out of context and it wasn't as it was that we stayed in the home and the travel trailer was intended to be like as an additional living space for the girls to be able to hang out without having my friends or former friends, you know, kids in the midst of it also, they didn't necessarily butt heads. And I was also told I would be connected to electricity as well as water. And when it got up there and everything was situated, it wasn't that way. By looking at dad's face, he does not believe her. We, her and I were very, very close friends, but over the course of time, things just became more and more tense and it just wasn't panning out to be a beneficial, beneficial situation, which I was already starting to look into other alternatives to housing to stay, which I've already moved and staying in Granville and the girls would each have their own bedrooms. Um, and uh, you pay, you're paying rent there or what? Yes. It's, is it a house? What it, what, where are you living? It's with my grandmother. She has a four bedroom home in Granville. Why, why weren't you there before that when you were living in the uh, camper with no running water and electricity? That wasn't living in the camper with no running water, electricity. That was just our additional space. But that was additional, but I can read between the lines that there was an awful lot of time because she was supposed to connect it to there and this and that and. Uh, it does not, and uh, I do have CPS out there. Um, I do have CPS at, um, at least uh, attached as a document, a safety plan that they recommend that the children not go back to you, and that uh, there should be a custody hearing on it. Although there's been no, no one's ever met with me. I, no, CPS never came out to that property that cps worker that had written up the safety plan is his kevin's ongoing cps worker from the incident that he had occur in october so, so even i if, haven't even if, even if it is an ongoing from an incident and stuff like that the cps worker did say um there's a safety plan signed by everybody keep the children safe not return them to michelle mom due to concerns of physical abuse substance use, allowing Peyton to use substances with her, yep. those sort of things. Uh, I can't, I can't overlook those at this point. So let me, let me tell you this. Um, there's clearly proper cause or change of circumstance to have an evidentiary hearing regarding custody. I have already explained, I cannot change custody on a Friday morning. 
I have to have an evidentiary hearing. You both be informed of the evidentiary hearing. You, if you know what you're doing, you're going to hire an attorney because you don't know what you're doing in a hearing. When you come in here, it's a formal hearing. Evidence, it has to be admitted in an appropriate way. It's not just sitting there talking. It's um, calling witnesses. Evidence has to be exchanged ahead of time. Um, anything that somebody wants to put in has to go to the other party ahead of time and all that kind of stuff. Uh, on that note, sir, could we uh, make sure that the defendant is advised to actually send it to the correct address? Because I never received any motion you, in the mail at all. You just moved. True. But he didn't send it to the address that... Was Here's an idea. Give him your new address. That's in Pearson, and I was never allowed to use that address. So what address do you think you were supposed to send it to? From my understanding, you should have sent it to the address I had on file at the front of the court, which is six zero. But you're not there. True. But I have a change of address put in and I have recently changed my address with front of the court. Two, three. Well, you're here today. <laughs> you must have found out somehow. There, I there. was able to get a copy from the court clerk. Where were you? Uh, was the uh, place up in Pearson? Is that the address that you were at with the kids? Is yes. that the camper address? That's the home address. But yes. It seems to me like he knows that that's where you were living and that's where the kids were living. And that's where that's where he came and got him. So I mean, he also I, knows I wasn't I, going to be staying you know, there. What? He was also it, informed I wouldn't be there anymore. He picked up the kids from there. Did you inform him then uh, right afterwards that you moved or an address? No, not as of yet, because he, he's not the most easy person to communicate with on occasions. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just telling you, if he went there and picked up the kids and know, and the kids know that's where they were living, and I'm sure, I mean, they're 13 and 10 or something like that, uh, that, that's where they were living. That's where I would think he would send it, because if he sent it to some other address, you'd say, I wasn't living there. And he knows I wasn't living there, because that's where he picked up the kids from. I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me that you're asking that he sends it to someplace else that he knows you don't live. And then he'd come in here and if you didn't show up and I'd say, where'd you send it? And he'd say, I send it to an address, but I know she doesn't live there. He also knew I wasn't going to be at that address anymore past that day that he picked the girls up. I'm not sure. I don't know if he knew that or not, but even if he, even if he thought you were going to move from there, you should have, contacted him and said, this is my new address. I mean, okay. there's got to be some responsibility. Otherwise, he's, he, otherwise, you'll come in and you'll say, I I didn't get it uh, because he knows I moved from Pearson. So, uh, no, that's I, I think he did what he could at that time. I think uh, everything has occurred appropriately as it is. I'm going to allow uh, for an evidentiary hearing. I'm just telling both of you that you're if one of you gets an attorney and the other, you're going to be in a huge disadvantage. Uh, and if this is really important to you, then I suggest that you seek out a um, family court attorney. It's not cheap, but this is your kids' lives that's, that you're fighting for, according to the two of you. Um, then we'll, we'll set up that evidentiary hearing. The, the question will be is, um, where should the children live in the meantime? Um, and, and I think that from what I saw, that they were in imminent danger when they were up there in Pearson. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I don't. Uh, there, there's nothing about that that seemed like it was appropriate and that uh, they were in imminent danger. Um, however, um, Mr. Lindsay, um, if she visits the kids at her grand, is it your mother or your grandmother's house, ma'am? My grandmother. Do you know the grandmother, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, is, is it, can the kids visit her there? I don't see why not, sir, but from my understanding, she hasn't called to check on the girls one time, sir. You don't. And, and she hasn't reached that. CPS has reached out from her from the number that we I contact her on, and she that's why she hasn't I... answered to them. That's why she hasn't talked to CPS. So I'd like to see get her drug tested for one. I and would happily comply there. with that. Happily, and I have a set time set up with a courtesy worker from Kent County next week. What I'm trying to do at this point is I'm going to leave. Where are the kids attending school, sir? 
the Chesney, New Chesney schools out here at my house. They're Ch they're attending the middle school in uh, Big Rock Elementary. Okay, so they're enrolled in what is it? Uh, Chesney. Chesney. Saginaw County. It's yeah, in I Saginaw know, County. Yeah, I, know, I know where Chesney is. It's uh, not too far out. I used to drive through it all the way, all the time, going over to Frankenwood uh, from here. Um, so I think the kids can remain, uh, in, and they are enrolled there now. They were not, I take it, when they were with mom. They were enrolled. They were, were enrolled in school. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying they weren't enrolled in Chesney. No. All right. Uh, I'm not going well, to keep they're they're moving these kids around. They're going to stay at the Chesney school. I'm going to allow you, ma'am, to... Um, visit with the kids, have parenting time every other weekend until we can get to a hearing date. Because it's going to be a little while until we get an evidentiary hearing on it. Um, you Parenting time that you have must take place at your grandmother's house. All right? Um, I, I feel fairly certain that that's safe even. I know there are allegations of drugs and stuff like that. I can't imagine that your grandmother allows you to sit around and do drugs okay i know uh, you're gonna deny it so either. i know you're gonna deny it i'm not saying anything okay um we will leave it so that um so you can have every other weekend um you can i sort of the girls have like a phone or something she can call them at or well uh, Peyton has a phone only when there's wi-fi uh i have my phone uh Your we have a house phone. We, have, we have a house phone oh you do have a house phone yes sir does she know the number of it? No, because she hasn't reached out at all since I picked the girls out, except a text that telling Madeline happy birthday. Other than that, she hasn't talked out to me at all. You haven't made it a, a welcoming like I could. You've outright told I'm, me just basically I'm, I'm I've done stuff. nothing to you. Hold on. Stop, both of you. I'm just setting this stuff up. Ma'am, you can have every other weekend starting next weekend, Friday at 5 o'clock till Sunday at 5 o'clock, exchanges you're over in chesting sir and she's here we gotta find a place to exchange the kids um somewhere between we, we had a previous meeting spot for my every other weekend sir in, in mirror and that's kind of between the two isn't it yes sir it's almost exactly halfway for both of us and uh what what was the meeting spot i mean it was a gas station are you it familiar with are you familiar with it, ma'am? Yes. All right. Then uh, you'll meet there. The parties are to not cause any problems there. I'm assuming that the gas station probably even has a no. camera and stuff like and, that. And what if she doesn't return the girls on that time, sir? I don't do you. Hold I on. wouldn't do that. Ma'am, uh, trust me, it won't go good for her. You will probably... I can't give you a lot of advice because I got to sit and be neutral, okay? I can't help you and I can't help her. If she doesn't return the kids, I'm sure, number one, there are attorneys who can help you to do that by an ex parte order or something like that for return of the children, whatnot. Um, I'm hopeful that that does not occur because it certainly does not help her case when we get to the custody hearing, all right? Um, all right. And it doesn't help you if you don't get the kids there, okay? I mean, if you don't get them there on Friday at five o'clock, it doesn't help you. Um, at some point, that my real, my only real concern in this is the kids. All right, it isn't, it isn't mom, it isn't dad, it's the kids, and I'm going to try and do something that is appropriate for the kids. Um, and and I think they should see mom. I think there's enough imminent danger that I'm not willing at this point to return the custody to the kids, but we will have a full-fledged hearing um, whenever that hearing comes up. But I'm again, I'm telling you there, when you get the notice, there will, you got to read the whole doggone notice because it will tell you stuff that you got to do on there. Attorneys know it, but you don't, all right? So you got to read that stuff. We'll leave the kids enrolled in the Chesning School uh, until further notice so that they are not interrupted again. They've been in the Pearson schools and now Chesning, and I don't want to now move them to Granville. They won't, they'll, their education is going to suffer. Uh, in the meantime, both of you uh, think about the kids first. Anything else? I do have proper cause change of circumstance. I do uh, have an evidentiary hearing. We'll set it up as soon as possible. Anything else? Uh -huh.
Friday at five o'clock to Sunday at five o'clock starting. Would you just uh, starting next week? I don't know how to get um, a phone number for her to contact the kids at because we're on YouTube and I don't want you to yell out a phone number so that anybody who's listening to it gets your phone number. Um, is there a way to email it or anything to her so that she can have a phone number to contact the kids at? Well, I can text it to her. She texted Maddie happy right. birthday and I got that. So text, I can text, text her. It to her. You are responsible to text it to her by noon today. Okay. Yes, sir. Ma'am, you can, I mean, that doesn't mean you can call the kids every 10 minutes, but I'll give you, I mean, you, you also can talk. These are not little tiny kids. They're 13 and 10. I mean, they can, you can call and talk to them. Just can't be unreasonable. You understand that, don't you, sir? Yes, sir. All right. We'll see you all. Uh, we'll, we'll send out the order. The reason I'm waiting until next week is because you won't get the order probably until sometime next week. Uh, you're due. And that's the exchanges in Muir. Is there a name of that gas station? Or I, You guys know it's, where it is. So I'm just gonna, it's a marathon. I can't imagine that there's more than one marathon station in Muir. So uh, at the marathon station in Muir, let's get that done. All right. Anything else, Mr. Lindsay? No, I don't believe so, sir. Thank you. Anything else, Miss Lindsay? No. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in the near future. I will definitely be on the lookout for this custody trial. I, I want to see the evidence. But considering the fact that the CPS worker said that she thinks that these kids need to be given over to dad for custody, that tells me that there was enough evidence for them to say that because they don't just say that lightly. And most of the time, 99.999% of the time, the judge grants what the worker says. What did you guys think of this case? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.